a first time for the channel as we begin our new adventure in the Copa America 2024, a tournament that is for the South American continent. It's said that Brazil and Argentina are very, very strong and kind of dominate this tournament. Or will we have a new pretender try and come for the throne? Maybe it's an invitational team that tends to play in these tournaments as well. More on who they are in a moment. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome in for the first time ever on this channel, the Copa America 2024. Welcome everybody to the Copa America 2024 Tournament Simulation. My name is Craig and for the first time ever on this channel we will be going through this entire tournament by witnessing one game from each of the knockout rounds after we go through of course what has happened in each of the group stages. Now for those who may not be familiar with how this tournament works it is a tournament of I believe 12 nations all from the South American continent and I believe one uh, invitational uh, nation who has been invited by the CONMEBOL Fed uh, Federation of South America and in this case it is Japan who has been invited into this tournament. Also I'm not sure if Costa Rica are also an invited team as well, because, uh, invited nation because they normally compete in like, the Gold Cup which would be another video that has been done on this channel so I'm not sure if they're an invite invitee as well or if they're just a nation who plays in each uh, Copa America. I don't, it's something I should probably look up. I'll probably do that for post edit. Unless someone's able to just let me know down in the comments. And speaking of which, if you do go on to enjoy this video, make sure that you hit the like button down below and smash the big red subscribe button so you don't miss future tournament uh, simulations and other episodes, uh, other videos such as the ongoing Unemployed to Legends series that we have on this channel. But without further ado, let us go through the group stages and what went down in each of them. And I say each of them, there's only two groups before we go into the knockout rounds, which will be the quarterfinals, the semi-final and the final. It's a fairly short tournament. Hopefully we'll get through this in good time because I want to enjoy the knockout round games as much as possible. Each group will see four nations qualify for the quarterfinals. So for group A, Brazil, Japan, who are the invitee nation, Colombia and Peru are all through to the quarterfinals. Venezuela and the hosts Ecuador are all out of the tournament. In Group B, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay and Costa Rica are all through to the knockout rounds of the Copa America. Paraguay and Bolivia are both comfortably eliminated with zero wins apiece. So with the group stages now out of the way, it is time to get into the knockout rounds where we will be starting with the quarter finals. Eight nations remain and the games are as follows. Chile versus Colombia, Argentina versus Peru, Japan versus Uruguay, which is the game that we will be viewing. The invitee nation of Japan against the... F How many times have, actually, have they won this? Five times? One, two, three. Yes, five-time winners, Uruguay. And Brazil versus Costa Rica. I did mention in the intro, the tour this tournament may have been dominated by Brazil and Argentina. Not so, actually. Two of the last four winners have been Chile, who went back-to-back -back in 2015 and 16. Argentina and Brazil won the last two... Uh, respectively but overall Brazil with six Copa America wins, Uruguay with five, Argentina with only three. I actually would have thought that Argentina would have won the tournament more times but it's been fairly open otherwise. Uruguay and Brazil leading the way with five and six wins respectively, Argentina with three, Chile with two and then you've got Colombia, Peru, Paraguay and Bolivia who were the first time winners of this tournament way back in 1963. Some interesting history there. It could be a case of we might still get an underdog winner but it might not necessarily be a shock if it was someone like for example Chile who are still in the quarterfinals against Colombia. Who knows where, which way this tournament is going to go? Who is going to show up and, and really perform in these knockout rounds? The first match of the knockout rounds for us in Copper America 2024 is about to kick off Japan versus Uruguay. Japan, as mentioned, the invitee to this tournament by Combabao, the South American Federation. Uruguay, former five time winners of the Copper America, they will be looking to equal the record set by Brazil and win their sixth tournament. 
uh, on the continent. Can they do it? But they're going to have to get past a very, very strong Japanese uh, team who will be looking to make the most of their opportunity here in the Copper America. First up, the Japanese uh, starting 11, and it will be Yoshihara in goal, a back four of Ishizaki, Takenami, uh, sorry, Takenami, Yajima and Fujiwara in the defence, Otsubo and Ishiguro in midfield, Okuno, Mizuno and Murai across the attacking midfield with Ono as the sole striker. For Uruguay, they have Martin Campana in goal, a back four of... Oliveira, Jimenez, Cuartes and Varela, a midfield of Bentica and Valverde of uh, European club fame of course, uh, Rodriguez on the left wing, De Arasqueta in attacking midfield with Nunes on the right wing, Maxi Gomez is the sole striker for Uruguay. Free kick here for Uruguay, Uruguay in the light blue it should be pointed out, Japan in the dark blue because football manager just doesn't know to separate team kits like they would do in real life and that's just a poor a clearance from Japan but there was absolutely no one up front for them they're just playing pure defensive at the moment against a very strong Uruguayan side Darwin Nunez on the right wing can he get the cross in he can it has been intercepted by the Japanese who just clear the ball again with no one up front very defensive start by them De Arasqueta as Uruguay continue to probe look for that opening Bentica Plays the ball over to Rodriguez, Gomez, Arasqueta to the overlapping Rodriguez, he slots the ball in and that is a goal for Uruguay, you have to say it has been coming, Japan have looked very very defensive in the opening 15 minutes of this game, just clearing the ball, lumping it up with nobody there and Uruguay just patiently taking their time looking for the opening, getting the overlaps on and Rodriguez duly puts the ball in the back of the net behind the goalkeeper. Poor start by Japan. Uruguay lead 1-0. Japan trying to play the ball out this time instead of just lumping it up from Murai. Who can he find up front? No will be D, but the ball is back to Ono. And oh, Murai gets it back and nearly bends one into the top corner. Very close and much more positive from Japan. Corner here for Uruguay. Varela to take. Puts the ball in and there is Cuartes. Oh, just wide for the Uruguayans. A second goal here could kill off Japan. As much as they've been much more positive, it's still been looking very much like a very strong Uruguay side taking the initiative here. Valverde, Darwin. Uruguay coming again. Can they find another opening? They've just been very patient. Ah, oh, well, one back there by Valverde and Gomez is through here. Can he finish? Oh, just on the post. It's been tackled, but the ball's been cleared finally. Chaos in the Japanese defence. And they've made it to half time. Just one goal down against Uruguay. Jonathan Rodriguez with a very well taken goal and Uruguay will lead into the second half. A possible Japan attack maybe here. Okuno plays in Murai who's looks most lively in Japan's attack. Can you play the ball in? Oh he's been tackled and that looks like it would be a penalty for Japan. A chance for Japan to equalize when Uruguay should really have been out of sight by this point. And what is the referee going to decide? It is going to a VAR and the referee is saying no penalty. It is going to be a free kick. It looks like it was just on the edge of the area that the foul was. Mizuno plays it in, but it has been cleared. As far as Darwin Nunez, who plays the ball forwards, but Uruguay just keeping possession. Very big decision there by the referee, and Japan could feel hard done by. Hayakawa with the corner for the Japanese. It has been cleared. As far as, who was that? Ishiguro, Takenami. Plays it over to Kabuta. Yajima. Patient build up, but Japan have less than 10 minutes to find. In fact, they've got less than two minutes to find something. Ball has been played in low, but it's just a poor cross at the end. Oh, and it's been one back there. Ishiguro for Japan. Hayakawa shoots and blazes well over. That may have been the last opportunity for Japan. And it looks like Uruguay are going to hold on. I say hold on. They've just looked very, very comfortable in this one. A 1.77 XG. Yes, Japan had a lot of shots, but they just looked so poor quality going forward. Uruguay, good value for their victory. Japan are on the way home. Final score, Japan nil, Uruguay won. The quarterfinals of the Copa America are in the books. And these are the final results from the quarterfinals. Chile, unfortunately, are out against Colombia. Only on penalties, though, after 120 minutes of neither side being separated and also neither side scoring. 
Colombia through on penalties to the semi-finals. Argentina also into the semi-finals. Lotoro Martinez with a brace to see off Peru two goals to one. Of course, the game that we just saw, Japan versus Uruguay. Uruguay won, one nil, thanks to Jonathan Rodriguez. And in the final quarter-final, Brazil smacking Costa Rica 4-0. Vinicius Jr., a brace for Marcos Antonio and Neymar getting on the score sheet. And that will mean the semi-finals of the Copa America have not even been drawn yet. Let me just uh, correct that. And indeed, here is the draw for the semi-finals of the Copa America. Uruguay versus Brazil and Argentina versus Colombia. Our feature match, of course, it has to be the two reigning, not champions, but the two reigning winner, most time winners of the Copa America. Uruguay with five Copa Americas to their name. Brazil with six to their name. Only one of them will be in the final. And we are going to find out exactly which one it's going to be. Two of the biggest names in South America, certainly as far as the Copa America goes, enriched histories in this tournament for both nations. A combined 11 Copa Americas between them, and only one will make the final. Uruguay versus Brazil. Brazil, of course, winners of the tournament in 2019. Uruguay haven't won the tournament, I think, since near the turn of the millennium. I remember seeing it on the winners page, but unfortunately I can't remember exactly which year it was. But this is going to be the starting 11s for both the nations. First up with Uruguay, uh, Martin Campana in goal, back four with Luxaltz, uh Cuartes, Arojo and Mendes uh, for the remainder of the back four, Torreira and Diaz at the base of the midfield, De La Cruz on the left wing, Rodriguez through the attacking midfield centre, Nico Lopez on the right wing, and Jonathan Rodriguez, the winner and the hero of the last round against Japan up front. For Brazil, Edison in goal, Rogério, Ibanez, Marquinhos and Danilo in the mid sorry, in defence. Bruno Guimaraes, uh, sorry, Bruno Guimaraes, Casemiro uh, at the base in midfield, Vinicius Junior uh, on the left wing, Lucas Paqueta in attack in midfield, Gabriel Jesus on the right wing with Roberto Firmino up front. First highlight of the game, Dela Cruz with the free kick has been cleared by Ibanez. Dela Cruz tries to shot but it has been blocked. Nico Lopez. Diaz. Uruguay again being patient. They need to be with this Brazilian side. Rodriguez off the post but Dela Cruz is there. He gets the rebound and Uruguay are ahead just before half time. That will please the Uruguayan bench. That has certainly pleased the Uruguayan fans in the stands. And Brazil are up against it now. Edison actually did save it but it, the rebound by De La Cruz was because of Edison's mistake palming it back into the area. A big no for a goalkeeper and it has meant Brazil go in 1-0 down at half time. Can they come back into it in the second half? Free kick here for Uruguay. They look to be all over the Brazilians at the moment highlight wise. De La Cruz. Oh my! What a free kick by uh, sorry, De La Cruz. I know his name begins with N. I'm sorry. Nicholas De La Cruz. That was it because I saw it at half time. What an absolute peach of a free kick by De La Cruz. He has been on fire in this semi-final. Campana with the ball. I saw the match stats before this highlight. The, the Uruguayans just look to be enjoying themselves against the Brazilians here. Saying that, Paqueta is getting the ball forward here. And there is Firmino. Evan Nilsson. Oh, here's the goal. I thought it was going to be offside. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought it was going to be offside. Evan Nilsson with the goal. It, it looked to be a hopeful ball forward, but Paqueta got on the end of it. Firmino with the original header, but Campana did the same mistake as Edison earlier. Just palmed the ball back into the uh, six-yard box, and Evan Nilsson got on the end of it. Uruguay 2, Brazil 1. Corner here, Lucas Torreira plays it in, but it is cleared by Danilo. And I think the referee has given a penalty. Oh, what happened there? Was it a handball? Possible penalty for... I don't know what it's for. I can only assume it was a handball. I didn't actually look at the bar at the bottom. But it is going to be Darwin Nunez who's going to take it. Saved by Edison. It's at a turning point for the Brazilians. They've got under 20 minutes. Could they find an equaliser? Torreira with the corner and it has been cleared, this time with no penalty being conceded. 
but Uruguay come again here. Avojo, it's uh, the highlight, comes to nothing. Big miss for Uruguay. A turning point maybe for Brazil as they search for an equaliser. Game is drawing to a close here. There is five minutes of injury time, of which we have four left. Let's sort into Darwin. Diaz, he's very, very tired, but he's just uh, playing as a playmaker at the moment, so he's literally just going to be sitting in that midfield. Dinalo, a chance here for Brazil, but they just give the ball away very sloppily. And at the moment, the Uruguay, I suppose they're just keep playing keep ball. I don't know why I just played that alert. Sorry for that. <laughs> no goal has been scored, but Firmino is through here. Oh, that was a chance. I feel like I've played the alert too early and it cursed the Brazilian team a little bit. And unfortunately for Brazil, that has resulted in them going out. Crucial miss at the end there by Firmino. But Uruguay hold on for another final. Could they still equal Brazil's Hall of Copa Americas with six apiece? Uruguay 2, Brazil 1 is the final score. What a game, but Uruguay are going to be so jubilant about that to get one over the old enemy. Semi-finals have now been completed in the Copa America and that means there are now just two nations left to battle out for the Copa America 2024 title. Of course one of those being Uruguay who we've seen have gone through and the second nation will be Argentina, Ocampos being the difference between them and Colombia in a 1-0 victory which means the third place playoff will be between Colombia and Brazil. We will not be watching the third place playoff because no one cares about it but the final will be between, if I pick the right manager, there we go. Uruguay versus Argentina. Uruguay looking for that record equaling sixth Copa America title. Argentina looking to go back to back. I feel like this has just been a adventure of what has seen Uruguay make it to a final. Can they see the journey through to its finish or will they fall at the final hurdle? Ah, uh, folks, here we go. It is the Copa America final. Uruguay, the five time winners of the Copa America versus only the three time. Copa America winners of Argentina. They'll be looking to put that right in this tournament and going back to back. I feel like there's a lot of nations who try to go back to back on these tournaments. But Uruguay will be looking to stop them. They'll be looking to match the record set by Brazil with six Copa America wins. Argentina, I believe Messi might still be in this squad. We're about to find out now, I guess. And yes, he is still in this squad. But let's go through the starting 11s. Firstly, with Uruguay, Martin Campana in goal. A back four of Oliveira, uh, Jimenez, Arrojo and Varela uh, with Valverde and Bentica in the base in midfield. Rodriguez on the left wing, Suarez in second midfield, that is the same Luis Suarez who has a slight injury actually. Uh, Rodriguez on the right hand side and Darwin Nunez up front. Very familiar Uruguay uh, starting eleven that we've kind of got used to over the past couple of rounds. With Argentina, the first time we've seen them in this tournament. Benitez in goal, back four of Tagliafico, Romero, Otamendi and Montiel. Ba uh, sorry, base in midfield is Rodriguez and Dominguez. Correa on the left wing, Buendia attacking midfield. Lionel Messi, the man himself on the right wing, with Lotoro Martinez up front. Corner, Buendia to take for Argentina has been cleared by one of the Rodriguez's. There's going to be a, quite a few of them in this game. Two of them for Uruguay himself. There is Messi. Cuts inside. Oh, he's been massively tripped. And <laughs> Oliver has injured himself <laughs> tackling. Oh, that's um, hilariously tragic. But it is going to VAR whether Argentina will have a penalty. And the referee taking his time deliberating over this. Uruguay also have an injury to contend with. And a penalty because it has been awarded. And there goes Oliveira. He's going off. Messi has got up. He's going to take the penalty. Big game player for a big game and he scores a big goal. It is 1-0 Argentina after 7 minutes. And my goodness, could Argentina be going back to back? If Mess if they do, it'd only be Messi's second international trophy. So he's personally got a, well, a personal mission to secure another trophy with Argentina. Oliveira is still on the pitch. Suarez, who's also injured. It's just two injured players uh, passing the ball to each other. For Uruguay, they're really up against it with effectively nine fit players. Rodriguez, Valverde. So I was thinking he was going to bend one in there, but he didn't. Varela on the right-hand side of the penalty area. Uruguay just being very patient here, trying to find an opening against Argentina here. Suarez loops the ball in, and that is Rodriguez. He has scored for Uruguay. And the nine fit players have 
got back to level pegging inside 10 minutes. What an opening 10 minutes we've had here. We've had a penalty, two goals, and an injury. And that's not counting the injury that Uruguay already had going into this game with Luis Suarez. Intriguing final we have here. 10 minutes gone, it's 1-1. One, one. Going into half time, and it is level pegging. Oh my, Messi picked up an injury. Lionel Messi has a red injury just going into half time. I think that's him done for the rest of the game. How are Argentina going to cope? They haven't got their talisman for the rest of this match. And it has been Matias Saracho who has come on for Messi. Can he have the same impact as what Messi did in that first half? Looking at it actually, there's a lot of Argentinian players who are shattered. So Uruguay have more energy at the moment and that could prove key, especially if we go to extra time with less than 20 minutes to go. Uruguay playing out, I say playing out from the back, they just lump the ball up. Ocampos, can he get the ball in? Yes he can, the, the shot from McAllister blocked. And the shot from Rodriguez outside the area goes blazing over the bar. We have, what, just over five minutes of normal time left. There is De La Cruz, but the free kick has been cleared. Only as far as Laxalt, Uruguay will have another chance here. They appear to have more energy than the Argentinians at this stage. Again, if it goes to extra time, You've got to favour the Uruguayans here. And Rodriguez is in here. And that is such an easy, easy tap in for Darwin Nunez. So late in the game as well. Five minutes left. I don't know if the Argentinians have anything left. They haven't looked the same since Messi went off injured. Their energy levels are so low. The Uruguayans looking very, very good for that sixth Copa America title. And you have to say they are looking the favourites to hold on here. They're all just completely red at the Argentinians. But they have a corner here. But it has been cleared as far as McAllister. Oh, good bend. And Campana was equal to that shot from McAllister. It is another corner for Argentina. We're into injury time. Correa. Oh, just over from Campos. I thought that was back of the net. I thought we were going to extra time. But by the looks of it, Uruguay have held on. Congratulations to them. They have secured their 6th, record equal, equaling 6th Copa America title. And it looks like they are going to be fighting with Brazil for who gets that 7th title at the next Copa America. I have no idea when that actually is, but congratulations to Uruguay, your Copa America 2024 champions. They have absolutely deserved it. We've seen their run to the final. They've absolutely deserved it in this final. Massive well done to them. The injury to Messi proved too much to overcome for the Argentinians. They just had no energy left. Uruguay took full advantage. And again, I'll say it again, they, have, they thoroughly deserved it. Final score, Uruguay 2, Argentina 1. Uruguay are your Copa America champions. So confirmation then that Uruguay are the reigning champions out of Copa America, that they will defend... Uh, their crown in, I don't know when the next tournament is going to be, I assume, is it every three years, four years? I would assume it's like 2027 or something. But before we go, let's just go through who were the best players in this entire tournament. So starting with goals, naturally. Lotoro Martinez with seven goals, far ahead of Gabriel Jesus and Jonathan Rodriguez on four apiece. But Martinez with seven goals for Argentina in their run to the final. Very, very well done to him in this tournament. Uh, average rating wise, Luis Suarez was, was the best player despite uh, in the entire tournament, despite an injury in the final. A 7.9 average rating uh, for Uruguay. Sorry if I said it was Argentina. It's not. It's for he was playing for Uruguay. Also, Federico Valverde, the second best player as well for Uruguay, 7.85 before Neymar and Lotoro Martinez for Brazil and Argentina respectively on a 7.84. I think the only time we saw Brazil was against Uruguay, so Neymar didn't really have that much of an impact for Brazil overall. He only played, oh no, he played seven games. He played a full seven for Brazil, so fair enough. In fact, I think that was the semi-final. My bad, it was the semi-final that Brazil had a run to. But well done to those players. They were the best performing in the whole tournament. For assists, Luis Suarez, four assists for Uruguay. Neymar, four assists for Brazil. Very good tournaments for them. Lionel Messi with three. Obviously, that's not uh, counting the goals that he scored as well. But how many goals did he get? Where is... Was that his only goal then? 
He's not on this list, so I think Lionel Messi only scored one, and that was in the final. So three assists, one goal. Not the greatest tournaments, but he gave everything that he could. Players of the match, Neymar and Martinez with three apiece as a top two. Francisco Serralta with two for Chile uh, as he finishes joint third with, with Valverde and Gabriel Jesus and Juan, Candra Juan Cadrado along with Jonathan Rodriguez and David Ospina. Quite a few players there sharing the player of the match honours. And for clean sheets, there wasn't that many in this tournament, was there? Walter Benitez for Argentina, Edison for Brazil, and Campana for Uruguay, we have seen throughout the knockout rounds, apart from the final, actually. Yeah, very good tournaments for them. They were the three best nations in this entire tournament, it's safe to say. Yellow cards-wise, honours shared between Valverde and Jesus, three apiece with Sanchez in third on two. So those are your best performing players in the tournament. That was the Copa America tournament in its entirety. I hope you have enjoyed this tournament simulation and I hope to do many, many more. If not in FM22, certainly as we head for FM23. But if you have enjoyed this video, if you have enjoyed this tournament, make sure you hit the like button down below. Smash the big red subscribe button so you don't miss future simulations and all other videos that will be coming out on the channel over the coming days, weeks and months. But thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you all for your support for this channel. It's meant so, so much. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.